All right, 12 hours later, back at the win. Uh, I'll have an official intro because I know everybody wants that. What's up, guys? It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. This is day two of the win. Got some numbers for you guys. So, ended up playing all of day one, and there are 177 players coming in. We're not super close to the money, surprisingly. Um, there's actually 107 players make the money. So, 70 players will come in and have an unfortunate time. I am luckily average chips, and uh, yes, I'm at the win. There are many people here for the beach club. I am being a degenerate and playing some poker. Anyways, um, that's the layout. Uh, $1,600 buy-in, first place. Oh, I keep dropping some. First place gets $260,000, and uh, that's a good amount of money there. This is going to be a three-day event, so this is day two, and then there's going to be a day three after this. So we're gonna play 10 uh, levels, 10 hours of play, and hoping for a long day, that's it. Coming in with about 40 big blinds, just gonna try to survive, chip up before the bubble, and uh, go from there, but here we are, arriving at the win. I'm gonna stop talking now because there's poker to be played, and let's, uh, let's just get into it. Starting things off in this tournament, one of the first hands, I've increased my stack to about 300,000 and I pick up Ace Deuce of Spades on the button. Lojack opens up the action to 13,000. He's a pretty big stack covering me. And when action folds to me, I'm in position, best position. And with a suited ace, I decided to call, get the big blind to call as well on a relatively short stack. And we're going to go three ways to a flop of Queen 9, 7 rainbow with one spade. Action checks to me, and I really don't have a whole lot going for my specific hand. I think this board should favor maybe the preflop opener or even the button player a little bit. So thinking that this hand could sometimes be a bluff candidate, I decided to not take the aggressive route and check. Going to a turn now, which comes the Jack of Diamonds. Action checks to me once again. And at this point of time, when there's so much passive action so far in the flop and turn, definitely trying to go for it. I bet a tad less than half the size of the pot to 20,000. The big one makes the call with about 120,000 in our stack and the other player folds. So now we're going heads up to the river. I have ace high in a dream and the river is a seven. Flush draw bricks, the board is paired and she checks again. With 150 players left in this tournament, getting closer and closer to the money, I'm trying to think of ways of how can I win this pot? Obviously checking back is not going to work with ace high, and I gotta try to get her to fold a queen or jack somehow. So thinking about how can I accomplish this? Would it be a big bet, small bets, or um, a massive one, which would be all in? Maybe that one will work. I want to win this pot right here and right now. I announce all in, putting her stack at risk and my opponent goes into the tank. I, uh, she's thinking for a long, long time and all I'm saying and screaming in my head is fold. This would be a massive punt if it gets called. My opponent thinks it over some more and I'm just praying for a fold as my stack would take a massive hit and she ends up doing so. Let's her cards go. Phew, I can finally breathe again. I chip up to over 360,000, kind of did this the hard way, but it's a good way to start off the day with a well-timed bluff. Sitting a tad card dead after break, we're in level 18. I have ace jack offsuit. I raise in plus two to 22,000, but I get the cutoff to go all in for about 28 big blinds, a total of 287,000. It's a pretty large all in, especially against an early position open. So I just wanted to show this clip as I am going to fold the ace jack off. But a few hands later, I pick up tens under the gun. I raise it up to 20,000 and I only get the big blind to make the call. We're going to a flop of ace, queen, seven, all clubs. My opponent checks it over to me here and on an ace queen high board with pocket tens I can kind of lean either way towards a bet or check but against this specific opponent I decided to bet 12,000 here and he makes the call going to a turn now which is the ace of diamonds he checks once again and against this specific opponent against other players I might actually check this one back but I think here I can get some value against this guy so I bet 20,000 here it's really really thin and probably bad in hindsight but Oh well, I'm trying to go for it. He makes the call for 20,000. Now to the river, which is a disastrous eight of clubs. I don't have a club in my hand. I don't really have much. Maybe I could bluff here, but action's gonna go check, check. And he shows ace four off suits. No club, but his trips are going to win. Granted, his pair of aces was already good enough on the flop. And maybe my turn bet was just a little too greedy. A few moments later, we are hand for hand. And then in this clip gets announced that we are now in the money. 
some pretty sick spots that are five all-ins during our hand-to-hand -hand period all at the same time. So the four was jumping around from table to table to make sure that everything was handled correctly. Always big shout out to the Wind at Poker Room staff because they always handle things really well, but just like that, we're in the money and let's try to spin it up. After locking up that min cash, I have king queen of hearts under the gun and I raise it up to 20,000 on 20 big blinds. There's a good reg in the hijack who makes the call and now action onto the big blind. And he's got a big stack and actually ends up three betting to 200,000. What? Okay. I understand he's trying to isolate me here, but the weird thing is that my opponent has 600,000 and the hijack, who's a very, very good player, has 900,000. So he's essentially just putting an insane amount of chips into the middle. But anyways, that's his perspective. Let's go over mine. Trying to think this over. 20 big blinds is a pretty decent chunk of chips, but it's not a lot to play with, especially if I fold my two big blinds here and I'll be the big blind the very next hand. I mean, king queen suited, it's a pretty good hand, but very well could be dominated a lot. And I'm trying to figure out hands that the big one might want to isolate me here that I beat. And uh, yeah, a lot of them are going to be ahead of king queen suited or just flipping. And my situation is pretty close, so you might see me doing some chip shuffling. If I chip shuffle some sort of score over 70, I decided to call, and I end up rolling a 75, so here we are. It's just the luck of the draw. It's time to play for my tournament life. I make the call. Hijack ends up folding, and we're up against Ace Jack. So not surprised to see this, and it's a pretty good sight to see as we are essentially flipping, and we're off to a run out where the turn comes the two outer. Find the suck out. So alive now, I'm such a luck box. Here we are. I win this one with the king queen with a pretty sick suck out on the turn. And just like that, find a massive double up and the very next deal, no need to panic. We are in the action again. I have sevens in the big blind and the unknown player shoves 10 big blinds. I make the call. He has ace queen, we're off to another flip and pretty good flop for me. Turn a straight and GG's to Daniel who watches the vlog. Pretty sick back-to-back -back hands, and just like that, literally in a span of three minutes, I've spun up the chip stack. Progressing to level 19 now, the blinds have increased. I have 600,000 in my stack, and I pick up sixes under the gun. Think my hand is okay enough to raise, so I've opened it up to 26,000. Action onto the low jack player, who goes all in for a total of 256,000. Action folds to me, it's another annoying spot facing essentially an all-in of 20 big blinds, but at least unlike the other time with King Queen, it's not for my tournament life. So when action folds to me, I basically know that sometimes my hand can call, or a lot of the time, honestly, it could fold as well. So trying to adjust to live players who may or may not be jamming as wide as they should be. Once again, I'd go to the chip shuffling and anything over 70, let's hope for a flip. And once again, the, the chips tell me 75. Okay, let's spin. I make the call and he has ace king. All right, flip city. Let's try to win another one here. The run out looks clean until the turn. Crushes my soul with a king. My stack takes a hit here and I give him 256,000. What would have been sick is that if I won this flip, my stack would have crossed over the 1 million chip mark. But alas, no 1 million for me yet. I'm down to 400,000. Trying to bounce back, I have four or five of clubs in the small blind. Love these suited connectors. And when action starts with the button, chip leader of the table opens it up to 27,000. Definitely think my hand will be calling here. Love to see a flop with this sort of hand, especially against the wide range that the button might have. Big blind calls as well. So three ways to a flop of king, four, six, two spades, and a club. Action's gonna check to the button player and he puts in a continuation bet of 25,000. Definitely expect this opponent to c-bet his entire range a lot of the time. And against a player who might be c-betting too much, I think my hand actually serves quite well as a check raise. With a gut shot straight draw, backdoor flush draw, have plenty of equity and would love to just win the pot right now with five high. I check raise to 70,000 and it works. Everyone snap folds. So very nice pickup of chips here. Never can complain after winning a pot with five high. All right, little update, because uh, we're on a quick break, coloring up. I'm gonna keep this short, because breaks are, you know, not, I don't really have much to say. Things are going well after the losing the flip with sixes there. Could have put me to a million in chips, but I have 625,000. There are under 80 players left, and cruising along. We've got uh, six more hours of play, six more levels to play at, um, for today, so 
Still got a long ways to go. And that's a really cool car. Wow. That's an expensive, expensive Bugatti. All right, moving on. After the break, there are 67 players left and we're into level 20 now and I pick up queen 10 off suit in the big blind. Hijack player starts off the action who's Andrew Moreno, really solid tournament crusher and he raises it up to 35,000. Folds to me and definitely going to defend here against him. So we're off to a flop of ace, 10, nine, two diamonds. I check it over to him with middle pair and he bets out 70,000. Okay, pretty large bet, already a tad bit confused by the sizing, kind of expecting him to bet small a lot of the time, but him choosing a large one means maybe he's got a good hand, a good draw, good equity. But anyways, I do have a pair, certainly not gonna go anywhere. Andrew is a very good player, being very capable of bluffing and having value here. Gotta play it properly against him and I make the call. Turn comes the king of diamonds, so that kind of shuts out all of my hopes of winning this hand, essentially. With no diamond in my hand either, action's gonna go check, check to the river, which is an ace. Interesting spot to be in here. Maybe, maybe I could leave sometimes, maybe I could check jam as a bluff as I block queen jack, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna check this one, let him see what he does, and he ends up betting 270,000, over betting the size of the pots, and definitely closes out all chances of me bluffing, so. I snap fold the pair of tens. He later tells me he actually had ace king, which is pretty sick, just sitting with the nuts. What a nice life for Andrew, but I end up folding and I chip down back to 400,000 again. With the blinds ever so increasing and you know, I'm getting a little shallow. Ace seven of diamonds here on 15.5 bigs. I end up open shoving in the low jack and get this one through. And I get a few more chips before arriving here with ace king offsuit and plus one. This hand gets weird because I decided to limp 20,000. In my head, I thought I raised, but I've been a little card dead and it's been a while since I raised preflop. I misclicked in live poker, who would have thought? So I end up limping for 20,000. This hand is really weird. Small blind and big blind limp in or call. All right, this is a pretty weird mistake, but we're gonna go three ways to a limped pot of king 10 deuce two diamonds. If only I raised preflop, this pot would have been bigger, but when action checks to me, certainly got a bet at this point, so I size to 25,000, and I get the small blind to make the call. That's pretty sick here, and we're off to a turn which comes another king. Amazing card, and now I literally just have the nuts. So when he checks it to me once again, I actually decided to check this one back, especially holding the ace of diamonds, feeling good about my hand, just feeling like I have the nuts, and I don't think my hand needs much protection, so being on the tricky side, I check. The river now is the three of diamonds. The flush rod does complete, but uh, whatever. Shouldn't matter too much, like I said, I block a lot of really strong flushes, and my opponent decides to bet out 100,000. Well, here goes the rest of my chips, I think. If he has a flush, then so be it. I Hollywood a little bit, but I already know I'm going to be shoving the rest of my stack in there. I don't have a whole lot and I've gotta get value if I somehow cleared him with trip kings. So I shove, just leaving one chip behind and he snap folds, so I'll take it. I wonder how this hand would have played out if I didn't limp preflop and raised. It seems like he was bluffing on the river, so it's nice that my check back on the turn worked out. Oh well, I'll take the pot. Alrighty, we have arrived. It is dinner break, one of the last breaks of the day. 52 players left. Lines are gonna go up and I am going to have 20 big blinds. That's not many. I haven't been dealt the best distribution of cards so far, but I'm trying to make it work. Yeah, 50 players left, that's all I got. I don't know what to say. I'm comfortable at 20 bigs. We're gonna be all in sometimes. You're gonna have to find a double eventually, or just, you know, just keep slowly tripping up. Who knows? That's all I got. Let's just get back onto the felt, but need some run good. Let's go. Once again, blinds are ever so increasing. I have a little over 400,000 in my stack and I pick up ace jack off suit in the high jack. Low jack opens it up to 55,000 and I've only got 16 big blinds in a dream. This is a high jack versus low jack spots and sub 20 big blinds. I think I'm just gonna go for it. I announce all in and folds to the low jack player who thinks about it and he ends up calling. 
All right, for my tournament life, let's see what he's got. He also has Ace Jack, but the black version. So I'm praying for a free rolls opportunity here. Dealer, give me some red flops. The flop comes all hearts. Oh my God, I actually have a chance at free rolling, but uh, it breaks out sadly. All right, we chop it up. I actually had a very good chance to double up through a disgusting suck out, but I'm still short stack here as we just chop up the pot. Moving on, I still have 16 big blinds in a dream and I'm in the big blind with Jack-8 off suit. Action folds the small blind, he limps in for 25,000 and this hand, I'm just gonna see a flop with. We're off to a flop of King-8-3 rainbow with middle pair here, my opponent checks. And at my current stack depth, I think I just need to go for it here and bet for value, maybe get stacks in, because a pair is hard to make. So I bet at one big blind of 25,000. And on a very, very dry board, he ends up making the call. So it doesn't seem like he has a draw, obviously, as there are no draws available. Let's see how this plays out when the turn comes a deuce. Full rainbow on board now, and he checks again. Definitely a save card for my pair of eights, trying to get value from an eight or a three. There are plenty of worse eights available, and I decide to bet 100,000 here. This leaves myself about 260,000 chips behind, and when my opponent makes the call for 100,000, definitely a little scary, but still thinking my hand might be good. You think a king a lot of the time might actually check raise or try to get more money in, but anyways, we're off to the river, which comes a nine. Overall, it does seem like a safe card, but now I have third pair. My opponent checks for a third time, and I debate on a very, very thin value bet. I think it over, but maybe I'm getting a little too greedy if I were to pull the trigger on that one. So I opted to just check this one pack, and good thing I did because my opponent has a king. He shows king six for top pair. Certainly was never going to fold to an all in, and thank God I checked back, but sadly, I'm down on fumes with 280,000. Before two deals later, I pick up pocket kings on the button. Action folds to me. And look, I have an incredibly small, small stack with about 13 big blinds at this point. I decided to limp with the second best hand in poker. Small blind makes the call for limping in as well. And then the big blind goes all in. No way, snap call, I am so in here. No freaking way, the big blind just bailed me out with my limp. Got him to go all in and when the small blind ends up folding, my opponent has eight, six off? What? Just hold, please. My opponent ends up flopping a six, but the runout is just clean. What is my opponent doing? I couldn't tell you, but I find an insane double up late in this tournament. Let's freaking go. I'm peaking at almost 700,000 chips now, the most I've ever had at any point in this tournament, and it's a great time to peak, great time to have the most amount of chips when you're running deep. A few moments later, we are now into the final 36. Final four tables remain, 36 opponents in here, and we're in level 23, where I've chipped up to almost 900,000. We're playing seven hand in my table, and I pick up three five of diamonds in the big blind. Under the player to my left raises it up to 60,000 for a min raise. Action folds to me, and I have a pretty good hand that will call here. I can make some straights, I can make some flushes, and I can make some pairs. So I make the call for 60,000, and we're off to a flop of ace, king, six, two diamonds. All right, dealer, like I said, this is a time to make a flush when we're 36 players left in this tournament here. I check it over to him and he bets 75,000. A tad large here on this board, but certainly can't go anywhere. I make the call with my flush draw in the turn, bink, eight of diamonds. Let's freaking go. I get there with the flush and I debate on leading here, but I decided to check. Doesn't think leading makes a lot of sense here. And my opponent bets again, this time to 135,000. Continuing with the large bets, seeing his story here, I just don't think my opponent has a hand that is going to bet fold. I just don't have a feeling after seeing him play for a little bit, seeing his demeanor. Seems like he has a hand that wants to go with it. And with the flush, no better time to put in more money. I check raise to 375,000 and my opponent is immediately not happy. Visibly not happy with my raise and uh, definitely thinks about it for a while before he announced all in. Definitely don't think he was Hollywooding. I snap call for my tournament life. Let's go, I have a flush and he shows the king of diamonds and a nine dealer. Clean, one time, all I need to see is a black card. River comes the queen of freaking 
Diamonds. And that's going to end the tournament life. The king high flush is going to win. It beats a five high flush, that's for sure. And um, yeah, all the momentum, all of that run good and deep runs I've had so far today, it ends here. I get knocked out and um, GG's, I guess. What more to say? Off to the outro. What do you want me to say? What do you want me to say? <sighs> Heartbreaking. Um, I was thinking, right before that hand happened, I was like, I've been running pretty good. No coolers or anything so far today. I was card dead a lot. I didn't play many hands, but I was thinking at least I'd never ran into like a cooler. I never ran two pair into a set. Didn't run flush over flush until now. Fucking God damn it, man. Um, out for 28th place. I was the bubble of a pay jump as well. So I missed out on 1200 bucks and a pile of chips. Uh, that would have been huge to hold. Uh, I made, I was in for two bullets of 1600. This music, music so loud. Out for 85, 69. The difference between 28th and first place is huge. Could have wrote it out. The good news is that now I can go to LA tomorrow and I'll play on Hustler and some streams. That's the good news. I guess we're gonna focus on positives here. Tournaments are filled with so much pain and heartbreak. Couldn't, uh, couldn't pull this one out today, unfortunately. The cash game video is coming in the next one. That's something to focus on. Just gonna go home, do some crying, hop on a plane to LA, and uh, be ready for some cash games. Thanks so much for watching. I have nothing to say besides just the brutal heartbreak. I'll probably make something on Instagram, so follow me on Instagram for real-time updates. This one hurt. This one hurt a lot. I'll see you guys next time.